In the daily struggle for survival, it's odd that play should be such a high priority in the animal kingdom. Yet some animals, like bonobos, our closest relative in the wild, spend hours at a time monkeying around to the point of exhaustion. So scientists are trying to find out whether the benefits of play outweigh the costs. It's difficult to understand what play really is, what good it does, and how it evolved. In short, how exactly do you define play? Most scientists agree on one thing. You don't need a reason to play, especially if you're a bonobo in the rich forests of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Games here, like everywhere, are entirely voluntary. All you need is the desire to join in. But animals like humans also need to be relaxed. Sad or stressed animals don't play. It's often obvious when animals are playing. Play fighting, hunting and play mating are popular games. But it's equally easy to mistake work for play. It's a game for anything. And scientists now believe animals play because it's fun. As with humans, age makes a difference. The young tend to play more than adults, and some species of animals play more than others. For decades, Mark Beckhoff, a biologist at the University of Colorado, has studied who the real players are in the animal kingdom. In a given species, the young animals play more than the adults, typically. And that's because the young animals aren't responsible for their own life. They get fed, they get protected, they get shelter. Typically, play occurs in the younger animals when they can be irresponsible. Uh, younger animals can also get away with uh, biting older animals. But once a younger animal becomes a competitor for food or for a mate, uh, the older animals don't like to play because then the younger animal is a threat to their status. The fun begins soon after birth. Some animals can't wait to get out there. Only a few days or even a few hours old, they're already biting, scratching and rolling about with abandon. Up until now, scientists believed infant games were essential for learning skills like hunting, fighting and mating. The young imitate their peers, running, chasing and wrestling, all vital skills in themselves for survival. Today, the theory that the animal playground acts as a classroom has fallen out of favor. Scientists now think the benefits of play are far more subtle and immediate. To start with, games offer physical exercise. And they may help to cement social roles and communication skills within a group. Scientists even suspect the fun instills psychological and physical well-being. Play could also prepare young animals for taking risks and dealing with unexpected situations. Not a formal apprenticeship so much as a quick prep. So why do some animals play more than others? Dr. Gordon Burkhardt at the University of Tennessee has a theory about which animals are game. He calls it the surplus resource theory. Well, surplus resource theory is a sort of an idea I came up with to try to explain uh, why some animals play and the context in which animals play. So the idea is this, that Play is found in animals when times are good. 
so we know that animals where they have a lot of nutritious food and resources are abundant in the wild or in captivity play more than animals that uh, do not have a sufficient food or they're spending all their time finding food. If you are spending all your time doing things that you need to for survival, then you're not going to have the time resources to engage in something that seems to be, for the moment, not really serious or, or valuable. Olive baboons live throughout Central Africa. They fit right into Dr. Burkhardt's theory. They feed off grass, leaves and fruit with the occasional small animal complementing a mostly vegetarian diet. Food is never a problem with the baboons of Kenya's Masai Mara National Reserve. So they can afford to spend a lot of time sleeping, grooming and playing. Youngsters have plenty of energy to use up. They're fed by their mothers for the first two years, so they don't have to waste precious playtime foraging. Baby baboons join in the fun a few weeks after birth. Animals that have a fair amount of parental care. When they're young, which is when you find most play, uh, if you have parents that are providing you with resources, protecting you from uh, enemies, uh, keeping you warmer in environments that are conducive to your survival, then you, in a way, are sort of in a sense sort of bored. In other words, you have time, resources, you're giving, being given the nutrition that you need for development, and so again, that's the context in which you would see play. So we know that animals with prolonged parental care are more playful than animals that have shorter parental care. Baboons live in troops of up to 200 individuals. Babies stick close to their mothers and with the ever-present threat of predators, babysitters are never in short supply. After two years' close supervision, adults let go. Parents are permissive, so youngsters are free to explore the most extreme adventure playgrounds. With ample food and parental protection, youngsters can play to their heart's content. But they're not the only reasons. Another factor here is that animals that can do a wide variety of things with their limbs, their faces, their bodies, we see that they play a lot more than animals that are much more limited in the kinds of behaviors that they can perform. So if their normal repertoire involves lots of different activities, typically we find that these animals can rearrange and put those behaviors and those movements in different contexts and practice different things with them, and that seems to be a factor involved in play. So young baboons take full advantage of their physical gifts to muck about. As adults, they'll need to master a wide range of terrain, crossing rivers and climbing trees in search of food wherever it's to be found. <laughs> 